for that we have to go to clause number 23.2.1 and we have to check figure 4 also let's go to ice code let's check clause number 23.2.1 you may see in clause 23.2.1a the basic values of span to effective depth ratio man, means uh, length to effective depth ratio the, uh, there are th uh, three uh, values are given uh, depends upon support condition cantilever simply supported and continuous there are uh, three values so in this problem we are using simply supported so span to effective depth ratio that means l by d is equals to 20 for this problem and we have to multiply this with a factor called modification factor you may see it in point c and to find out the modification factor we get the value from uh, figure number four so let's go to figure number four in figure number four look in this graph in x axis there is percentage of tension reinforcement in y axis there is modification factor what we have to find out ultimately and this curves line these curves are the values of fs so depending upon the percentage of steel and value of fs we have to find out the modification factor which we have to multiply with span to depth ratio to get the maximum span to depth ratio span to effective depth ratio so to find out uh, fs the formula is given just below the uh, graph look fs is equals to 0 0.58 into fy multiplied by area of cross section of steel required that means ast required by area of cross section of steel provided that means ast provided so we have to solve out um, uh, this problem with the help of uh, this formula and we have to find out the value of fs and percentage of steel with the help of these two we have to find out modification factor so let's solve it out so first of all we have to find out the percentage of steel it is very easy ast area of steel by cross section bd into 100 uh, that is equals to 100 into ast is uh, 942 by b is 250 multiplied by d is 462 that is equals to 0 0.8 percent okay uh, now uh, fs is equals to 0 0.5 fy ast required by ast provided so 0 0.58 into fy is 415 into ast required is 833 by ast provided is 942 that is equals to 212 mpa so from figure 4 of is 456 2000 we have to find out the value of modification factor with the help of the graph and with the help of interpolation method so for uh, fs is equals to 212 mp and percentage of steel 0 0.8 we have to find out the value so let's check the figure so in this figure in the graph uh, we have to find out uh, for percentage of steel 0.8 look on x axis 0 then 0, 0 0.4 then 0 0.8 0 0.8 is given in the line let's check for fs fs is 212 for our problem but 212 is not given here here is given fs 190 and given fs 240 so we have to find out uh, the value for um, uh, a percentage of steel 0 0.8 and fs 190 and for fs 240 because sf2 fs uh, 212 is lies between these two line so if we find out these two values for fs 190 and fs 240 we may interpolate uh, the value of modification factor so um, let's uh, see the, for 0 0.8 the line um, crossed with the curve fs 190 approx at modification factor 1.3 and uh, for fs 240 zero, uh, percentage of steel 0 0.8 it is approx this is 0 0.8 and this is 1.2 that means uh, this is 1 
so this is one point something let's see the notes what is written what i have already um, assumed for this this is actually approximate value because direct value is uh, not possible to find out from this graph but we have to take approximate values so let's go to the note and check the value for 240 and 190 what is the value of modification factor from this graph okay uh, so we find out uh, the uh, value of modification factor is 1.3 for fs 190 and percentage of still 0 0.8 and value of modification factor 1.08 for fs 240 and percentage of still 0 0.8 so 212 fs 212 is lies between um, fs 190 and fs 240 so let's interpolate and uh, find out the value of modification factor for fs 212 there are two method you may apply any of this uh, left side is conventional method and right side is uh, formulated method so um, uh, let's check uh, so modification factor uh, if we check the right side modification factor is equal to 1.30 within bracket 1.30 minus 1.08 by 240 minus 190 as it is lies between this multiplied by 212 minus 190 so the value is 1.21 so 1.21 is the modification factor for FS212. So now uh, to find out L by D max span to effective ratio maximum uh, for um, simply supported beam we have already seen in IS code that is 20 and we have to multiply with the modification factor. Modification factor is 1.21 we have already find out. So uh, L by D max that is equals to 24.2. Now let's check um, length to depth span to depth ratio provided L by D provided L is 6000 um, mm and uh, D is 462 effective depth is 462 mm that is equal to 12.9 that means L by D maximum is greater than L by D provided hence it is okay for deflection okay so it is satisfied the deflection check let's go to next step next step is design for shear we have to design shear also for shear we have to provide reinforcement and that is called stirrup also shear reinforcement also or stirrup so first of all we have to find out the shear force shear force um, is denoted by vu is equal to uh, wu into le by 2 and that means wl by 2 we know the formula so wu is 27.2 we have already find out and well, there is multiplied by effective length that is 5.77 by 2 that is equal to 78.5 kN uh, that, that is equal to 78,500 N so from this we have to find out the shear stress because we have to design uh, this uh, for shear stress and we have to provide reinforcement for that so nominal shear stress tau v is equals to vu by bd we know that formula otherwise you may find this formula from clause number 40.1 in is 456 2000 also this is already written in this so vu is 78500 and cross sectional area uh, that means 78500 by 215 to 462 that is equals to that means tau v equals to 0 0.68 mpa now design shear strength uh, of concrete Look, uh, concrete also takes shear strain, but the excess shear strain is have to carry by reinforcement. So this is this uh, excess value is carried by shear reinforcement. So first of all, that's why first of all we have to find out how much amount of shear stress uh, concrete may carry excess value for excess value we have to design shear reinforcement um, so for this also we have to go to is code table number 19 mm, so uh, first uh, let's let's go to uh, table number 19 okay this is table number 19 design shear strength of concrete the tau c in newton per mm square or mpa so from this table we have to find out the shear strength of concrete how much it may carry so in first column 
goal number one this is percentage of steel look formula is given just above the table 100 into AS or AST by BG so our percentage of steel in this case is 0.8 so here 0.8 is not given you can see but 0.75 is given and 1 is given so for this two percentage we have to check with the help of grade of concrete the shear strength of concrete tau c so 4.75 you can see an m25 grade concrete tau c is 0 0.57 and for one percentage and m25 concrete uh, value of tau c is 0 0.64 so point is, is it is definitely lies between these two value and again like uh, modification factor uh, we have to interpolate and find out the value of tau c for 0.8 percentage of steel and m25 concrete so uh, from table number 19 of is 456 2000 uh, we have take a value for percentage of steel uh, 0 0.75 the tau c for 0 0.75 is 0 0.57 and tau c uh, for uh, percentage of steel 1 is 0 0.64 so we have these two value and uh, for percentage of steel 0.8 the value should be lies between this so from interpolation we uh, we may find out the value so for interpolation so tau c is equals to 0 0.57 plus um, within bracket 0 0.65 minus 0 0.57 bracket close by uh, within bracket 1 minus 0 0.75 bracket close multiplied by 0 0.8 minus 0 0.75 so the ultimately the value of tau c is 0 0.58 uh, this value is less than tau c max that is 3.1 the value of tau c max is given in table number 20 of is 456 2000 for m25 concrete the value of tau c max is 3.1 the maximum value of uh, tau c that means tau c max is 3.1 so our value tau c is 0.58 that is uh, less than tau c max so um, uh, so this is okay okay uh, uh, so as uh, tau v is greater than tau c therefore shear reinforcement is required if tau v is less than tau c in that case no shear reinforcement is required steel up is uh, given in convenient method but in this case tau b is greater than tau c that means for this excess value we have to design shear reinforcement okay. uh, so shear to be carried out by reinforcement um, that is uh, vus so vus is vu minus tau c into bd so, tau c into bd means uh, the shear carried by the cross section that means by the concrete so the excess value VUS which have to carried by reinforcement that is 11510 Newton. So using 8 mm dia 2 leg stirrup now ASV that means area of stirrup is 2 into pi by 4 into 8 square that is equals to 100.53 mm square. So now spacing of stirrup. So maximum spacing of stirrup the formula you may find out from clause number 26.5.1.6 um, open your IS code book and uh, uh, open this clause number you uh, find out this formula okay. so SV is equals to 0 0.87 into ASV into FY by 0 0.4 into B so that is equals to if we put the every value here the spacing is 362 so now uh, the, we have to um, select the spacing the spacing should be list of at a 0.75 d that means 0 0.75 into effective depth that is 462 that is equal to 46 300 and what we have find out that is 362 so the spacing should be list of 3 so list value is 300 mm that's why we provide 8 mm 2 leg stirrup at 300 mm center to center distance throughout the length of the beam okay now the last check the check for development length to check this we have to use codal provisions obviously 
So, first check the uh, codal provisions. Let us go to code. So, as per clause number 26.2.1 of IS 456-2000, the development length of bars is given by LD, L suffix D and that is equals to phi into sigma s by 4 tau bt. So, phi we know the diameter of bar, sigma s is trace in bar at the section considered at design load, but sigma is this abbreviation we use for working stress method, but in case of limit state method instead of this we use fy by gamma and value of tau bd is given in 26.2.1.1. Let us check the value of tau bd. The value of tau bd for N25 concrete is 1.4 as per this clause and the checking the final condition for development length is we may find out from here m1 by v, v means vu plus l0 that should be greater than ld that means that should be greater than development length. This is the checking this is written actually here ld is computed uh, for fd does not exceed this value okay m1 by v plus l0 that means this should be greater than ld so let's check in our solution so uh, to find out the value first um, find out uh, the value of m1 that is equals to 0.87 fy ast into d within bracket 1 minus ast fy by bd fck you know the value comes from nxg of is 456-2000 so if we put every value here we may get the value of m1 moment that is equals to 13585698 newton and uh, value of view is uh, already we have that is equals to 78500 newton and uh, using no bend in this case uh, we assume that we use no bend or hook mm. uh, so l0 is equals to 0 So now the uh, equation we have seen in IS code m1 by v by plus l0 that is equals to if you put the values that is equals to 1730 mm right and now uh, let us check the value of uh, ld uh, that is equals to as per formula phi uh, into sigma s t by uh, 4 tau bd uh, that is equals to phi fy by gamma m for limited method by 4 tau bd if we put the values uh, values in this equation as we know the, the value of tau bd from uh, clause number 26.2 we have already seen in is code the ultimately the value of ld after total calculation is 1289.5 mm so it is uh, it's clear that uh, mu uh, m1 plus vu plus l0 is greater than ld hence codal uh, requirement is satisfied that means it is also safe and ok in uh, development length check. So, design is complete. Now, we have to write out ultimately what we have uh, get the design data we have get from this design after all checking completed. The design data here is the design data. So, uh, size of beam is 250 mm by 500 mm. Main tensile bars is 3 number of 20 mm. Um, uh, dia bar of a 415 grade steel shear reinforcement that means stir up is 8 mm dia 2 leg stir up at the rate 300 mm center to center and anchor bars um, uh, we may provide two numbers of 10 mm dia bars okay. so this is the design data from this design data we have to now draw the longitudinal section and cross section of the beam okay so let's uh, check the drawing so now um, you can see in your screen the longitudinal section and cross section after the design with all design data. Uh, so, we have um, draw here, here uh, longitudinal section showing the stirrups uh, and show, showing the stirrups and the spacing of stirrups um, and uh, bearing of wall 
uh, you should also draw the center to center distance clear uh, center to center distance of beam uh, that means effective length and in cross section the uh, in cross section view uh, there is already uh, uh, that is marked the tension mem uh, tension bars that there, there is three number of 20 mm dia tension bar um, and uh, two numbers of anchor bar here so uh, the whatever we get from design uh, we get in design data we have to draw this okay so just see the drawing and draw it so here the design of singular reinforced beam is complete as per question and i hope you have enjoyed that so this is how to design singular reinforced beam by limit state method that's all for this lecture thank you